the leader in HD. This is 12 News Today. Just this weekend, an NFL player and a Valley High School football player were seriously injured during games. Nicole McGregor is live with information every parent, coach, and athlete needs to know. Nicole, good morning. Yes, Scott, good morning. And the season has just begun. We're joined now by Dr. Um, Dave Carfagno. Excuse me, Dr. Carfagno. All right, neck really is something we need to focus on. It is the danger zone. Yeah, the cervical spine is consistent with the neck, which is just below your uh, head. And what we see a lot with athletes in uh, football specifically in this case uh, now is that they're having uh, more incidents of uh, neck injuries that we see in the media just recently in the last couple of days uh, in high school and a professional athlete. And one of the big things that we try to stress in the medical uh, professional area is that is tackling technique and not leading with your head as, a, as almost like a spear or a battering ram. So that's one of the number one reasons why we see neck injuries in football. You say that's very, very important. We are looking at video of a man, a young man, in, foot, in a football game at Deer Valley High School. He felt half his body go numb in the game when he was hit. He is getting better. Is that rare? Uh, overall, it's, it's very rare. It's about seven and a half cases per 10,000 football players called transient quadriplegia, where they become paralyzed uh, very briefly. So what happens is that the, the brain uh, and the spinal cord get kind of rocked in such a manner that the neck becomes a, uh, the battering ram and his spinal cord gets inflamed briefly. Uh, and some of this may be also attributable to, to a uh, narrowed spinal canal too, um, but they, they won't find that out until after they do x-rays and MRIs. So in this case, it's a good thing for him. You say the key is really also the treatment that they receive right away and after that. Yeah, the, the well-trained staff from the athletic trainer to the team physicians to the emergency professionals on the field all the way to the hospital. As we can see, there's a big difference regionally, even with the professional athlete, how he was treated to the utmost of care uh, in the hospital and directed even by the uh, Center for the uh, Miami Project was a peripheral doctor that was uh, guiding the Bills team physician uh, with a uh, professional player that was uh, occurring. And Dr. Dave Carfagno, thank you. He says that tackling techniques, as he mentioned, is key, key, key. He also mentions that the fit of the safety gear is very important as well. You need to have that fitting just exactly perfect. And he says, of course, football isn't the only sport where you see these kind of injuries, but there's also injuries like this in the neck and water polo, gymnastics, diving, just to name a few. Live in Scottsdale, Nicole McGregor, 12 News Today. The leader in HD. This is 12 News Today. Yeah, just this weekend, an NFL player and a Valley High School player were seriously injured during games. Nicole McGregor is live with information every parent, coach, and athlete needs to know. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Tram. And it's just the beginning of the season. We're already seeing this. We're joined now by sports medicine doctor David Carfagno. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. All right, the neck really is the danger zone that we need to be aware of, right? Yeah, it's the area that actually is synonymous with cervical spine injuries, uh, which uh, lead to uh, paralysis and to temporary paralysis that you see as most commonly into the athletes that uh, last couple weeks uh, in football. And so this is the area that we get concerned about as physicians that uh, where injuries can occur from. Yeah, just recently we saw a Deer Valley football player. Um, he felt half of his body go numb when he was hit. He actually is doing better, and that's actually not all that rare, you say? Uh, it, it's rare overall in all neck injuries, uh, but what we call transient quadriplegia, where they lose uh, motor and sensory function to the arms and legs, about seven and a half per 10,000 football participants occurs. Wow. All right, you say the key is also the treatment as soon as they are injured and, of course, beyond that, especially in the case with this NFL player. Yeah, the treatment may vary, but um, most the medical professionals from the athletic trainer, the team doctor on the field, the coaching and staff, all the way up to the hospital uh, can vary, and hopefully we can get everybody educated and trained that they can treat the uh, injured athlete the most appropriate way. Of course, if they have the best of the best tr treatment, that's going to be better for them. Yes, correct. All right, tackling techniques, do you say, also have changed over the years to, uh, so that you can avoid these types of injuries? Yeah, in 1976, the NCAA instituted you no know, spearing and tackling. And so what, when you lead with your head as a tackling, uh, you're creating a battering ram, and that's going to help uh, increase cervical spine injuries. So this was eliminated, uh, and the rules were applied. So we've seen some decrease from cervical spine injuries because of this ruling. 
Football safety gear hasn't changed all that much, but what's really important when it comes to that? Well, that it fits properly and that uh, the trained professionals, the trainers, the doctors, coaches see that their football equipment is on properly and it fits appropriately. Dr. Carfagna, thank you. He says, actually, if you don't have it fitting properly, it's almost as if you don't have it on at all. He says football is what we're talking about right now, but he says there's a lot of injuries, neck injuries, specifically in other sports like hockey, wrestling, gymnastics, diving, even water polo. Live in Scottsdale, Nicole McGregor, 12 News Today. Okay.